the PubMed Database, brought to you by California State University San Bernardino's John M. Fowl Library. To find the PubMed Database, start on the library's website. Scroll down and click the Choose a Database button. This puts you into the list of our more than 150 databases that we've divided up by the broad subject categories. PubMed will appear under several of these categories in this demonstration. I'm going to click on the one for kinesiology. PubMed is the first database up on the list. And to get into it, click the title and use your My Coyote login. PubMed is done by the National Library of Medicine, which is a government entity. PubMed is the world's largest index of scholarly medical and health sciences literature. It is a huge database. I'm going to enter my keyword search. And my keyword search has brought back 869 results. I'm going to need to refine this. We've got many, many controls here that we can use to do that. And one of the first ones here on the left is a sliding range of dates. We do want the last five years, but I've discovered that in this database, if you run more than one search, one after another, this will change to keep the last five years constant, come down and click this button right here. I want to make some other selections. Under article type, I'm going to click journal article and my list updates. And you can see I have fewer things there. And you have a choice of these other selections for article type, but we're not seeing all the possibilities here because there's not enough room for them all. If we go down to the additional filters button, we can customize the display. We come up on article type. Since we already clicked journal article and that was visible on the search screen, that one is already in a, has a check mark in the box. You have all of these other things that you can choose from. For this demonstration, I'm going to set, select Practice Guideline. And I'm not done yet. I can choose from these filter categories. I'm going to come over to Sex and choose Female and then Show. Now, what I've done is I've made my new selections show up in the list. I still have to click in them. So now, under Article Type, I have Journal Article and Practice Guideline. And further on down, here's my box to click for Female. And now I have 90 results instead of 800-something. It's still kind of a big list, so now what I'm going to do is come up to the to the search box, leave a space, and put in one more keyword, focusing on just one particular area of the body that sustains injuries during soccer. And search. And now I have a very manageable list of 25 results that are very specific to a topic. So what are we seeing here in the list view? Well, just like our other databases, you're seeing the title of the article, the author, the title of the journal, some details here, the volume, the issue, the pages, the digital object identifier. Now we're getting a little snippet of the abstract or summary here. Let's take a closer look. I'm going to click on that article title. To go to the more detailed screen, 
And now we're seeing some of that same information being repeated. The title of the journal, the particulars on the volume, the date, the issue, the pages, and so forth. That title of the article, the author, and now we're looking at the abstract coming up here. And if we scroll down, we see more information about this article. And they're offering us similar articles, should we spot something useful there. Continuing on down the screen, it gives us some more information, uh, some of which you don't particularly need to pay attention to, but the mesh terms are very important. Uh, MESH is the abbreviation for Medical Subject Headings. What are these? When the National Library of Medicine puts an article into their database, they index it. They assign specific subject terms that they've agreed on, that they never vary from, in order to describe the topics that are included in that article. And I will conclude this demonstration by showing you how to search the MESH terms directly. And why you would want to do that is when you choose one of the MESH terms and you get results, you know for sure that those results have substantial information on that topic. But we'll save that for the conclusion. All right, I'm going to go up. Now, of course, we want to find the full text of this article. And there's our Search for Full Text button. And this is the system that we paid extra for at the library here that overlays all of our 150 databases, everything we subscribe to. So, and when you click on that button, it will check automatically to see if that full text is available to anything that, in anything that we have. And let's see what happens. Search for full text will be absolutely honest with you. After it checks everything that we subscribe to, if it does not find that full text, it will come up with this message and remind you that sometimes you get lucky if you check in Google Scholar and it gives you a link to do that. Let's see what happens. And we're not even seeing the same title or author here, so no, nope, we didn't get lucky. So if we go back, we can order this article through our interlibrary loan service. And you can click through here to place that order. Uh, these articles are delivered electronically through your email and usually in about three working days. So that we do give you access to pretty much the whole world of information uh, because we get it from other libraries if we don't have it. So do keep that in mind. And I'm going to back up. Now, if you want to automatically cite the article that you've chosen, you can use this command here, or this button. And if it's not in the format that you need, and it won't be because it comes up on the National Library of Medicine's format, you can open it up and change it to APA. And then you can copy it or download that. Now, when you're using these automatically generated citations, do give them a good look before you turn in your paper. There may be errors because they're automatically generated and not by people. And let's go back to our search results and take another look at another article. So number two, let's take a closer look at that. I'm clicking on the title. And in this article, we're seeing multiple buttons come up offering us full text. When you have the multiple button situation in PubMed, and I think this is one of our only databases that does this, go for the search for full text first. See what that does. And bingo, we did find full text in another database. And this is the link that you would click to go through to that database where that full text lives and then print save or email it. Very good. And I'm going to go back. And 
And I want to show you one other item from our list. I'm going to go to number six here and click on the title. And notice that we have two buttons here for the full text. Go for search for full text. And again, it did not find it in anything that we subscribe to. But we have that other button. So before we check Google Scholar, we could go back and try the other button. And there's our full text coming up. There's the link to the PDF right there. Now the catch with the multiple buttons for finding the full text is sometimes the other buttons, and by other I mean the ones that are not the library's search for full text button, sometimes the other buttons will give you free full text and sometimes you will land on sites that want to charge you for things. If you, if you land on one of those, go back to search for full text and place an order for an interlibrary loan and you will get that article. All right, I'm going to show you now how to search the MeSH subject headings. For that, we go back to the very beginning. I'm going to click on the PubMed logo. I'm going to ignore that top search box because that searches the PubMed database, not the MeSH database. I'm going to scroll down and click on MeSH database. Now what we're searching here is not articles. We are searching the subjects. And what, we're, what we can do when we search this list of subjects is build our own searches that we can then run in PubMed. And let me show you how that's done. So in the search box up here, I'm going to put in the word exercise and search. And notice that we have a lot of options here. Plain old exercise and a bunch of other things. So if one of these is more specific to your topic, choose one of those. In this demonstration, I'm going to go with plain old exercise. I'm going to click on that and open it up. And associated with exercise, are all of these subheadings. You can begin to see how intricate this MeSH subject heading thing is. But this is good because it helps you find exactly what you need much more quickly. And notice that we have a box here for standards. I'm going to click that. And we can now search exercise standards by going over here to the PubMed Search Builder. We'll add to Search Builder. And now we can search PubMed for every single article that has something to do with exercise standards. And we come back with 251. And let me go back. And I'm going to add that in again to the Search Builder. But this time, I'm going to combine that with something else. I'm going to come up to that Mesh search box and put in Back Pain and Search. So now, my search has taken me to the listing for Back Pain. I've got a couple options there. And over here on the right, it has kept exercise standards in the search box ready to combine with whatever I select here. So I'm going to go to back pane. And I could have just clicked at that uh, little box next to back pane, but I wanted to sh open this up and show you all of these things that are associated with the topic of back pain. And we'll add that to the search builder. And we get an automatic AND there, perfect for our search. And now we search PubMed. 
and we get five results that include the subjects exercise standards and back pain. And this is substantial information. It's not just a brief mention. The end. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your research.